Hi there, you guys. Jacqueline Jacks from AVA Live Radio, and we are live with Diane. Hi, Diane. How are you? Hi, Jacqueline. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm awesome. Thank you so much. It is so great to have you here. I'm so glad that you joined me for a live stream because this is so cool. We're right on Facebook, and I can finally see you when I talk to you. <laughs> that is really cool. <laughs> I know. So tell me what's going on with your music. I'm sure everybody's really excited to know and to hear what's happening. Um, right now, we just recently released Lemonade, uh, Freshly Squeezed, and it did just as last week. Uh, it hit a 124 on Friday morning quarterback. That's where it debuted. Oh, my gosh. Congratulations. That's really, really exciting. <laughs> yeah. Squeeze is on right now. Right? No kidding. What do you feel contributes to you having such great success with your music when you release things? I know you, you always do things differently, but I think you work really, really hard and we should pay special attention to you and your team and, you know, everything that, that goes on behind the scenes to be able to make it all happen for you. Well, it starts with a good album, of course, and a good plan. Um, and then I go through and I pick the songs that are going to be released. Of course, the order is kind of up in the air. It depends yeah. on what's happening in the world. And of course, right now it's summer, so Lemonade really works well. I, I had planned on releasing Lemonade earlier, but uh, one came out of the woodwork. I did not plan on it, it was Secret Lover. Oh, really? Yeah, and it was charting in the top 40 for six and a half months. So there's things that happen that you just can't plan, you know? Yeah. I totally agree. Yeah, you just have to go with the flow, especially especially in the music business. But, you know, I think all the businesses are kind of like that because sometimes something will take off and you don't expect it. And if you're not ready and prepared to take full advantage of that, you know, and shift your gears to where it's really important, then you're not able to, to keep up with what's really happening in the market today. Do you find that, that these, these trends in your music business are reflective of a micro niche trend at all in music itself? I do. I do. I think it's, it, it's a ripple effect across the industry, not, not just music, uh, art as well. It is. I know. I agree. But I mean, a lot of artists, I mean, it's really big now to uh, paint and people want to buy originals. They do not want to buy prints. Yeah. Oh, isn't that true? Do you think that now you, you, you I, I don't even know if our listeners really know to what depth and dimension your talent lies. You know, I know we've talked a lot about your new music, song to song, but you have a tremendous amount of creativity behind you, like just beautiful artwork and all kinds of things. Why don't you walk us through what's behind you there? Because there's so much interesting artwork and, and I see you've got your doll there, which I'm so happy about because I'm hoping there's going to be a cartoon one day. <laughs> a absolutely. Um, I'm going to have a friend of mine, uh, Rudolfo. He's going to guide you through this uh, we're going to look at Hendrix. This, this painting yeah. was a commission piece um, by the family that owns the largest collection of Hendrix artwork. Um, I was okay. a branded artist, and, and I was in a non-disclosure for three years during the time that I was cutting up Jimmy's artwork, not your original. We scanned him in high resolution and branding his artwork, but they needed a piece to front the, the, the project. So I painted this painting and they inserted three of his originals. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. This, this piece was, uh, the original was at the Gallery of Music and Art in Las Vegas, Caesars Palace, uh, six months of last year. Beautiful, really neat, I like that. And uh, I have a friend, Leanne, uh, and she's friends with Chris Winfield, uh, Winfield Galleries. Uh, they looked at some of my artwork because I was wanting to work on branding my stuff. But my artwork was all over the map, Jacqueline. I, I you know, 
freaky. I had, you know, <laughs> but it was just like my experimental, day. right? Very, very the, experimental. Proved I am to stick to it that you're excited about, that your fans are excited about. So I worked real hard for about a year and a half trying to develop this style. I like that a and lot. Really well on t-shirts and clothing. I'll bet. Yeah, it's beautiful. And what I love animals, obviously. Oh, me too. And dogs and cats. And I have been given a recent challenge by a friend of mine to try some African animals. So oh, I recently God. did one of a, a tiger and a leopard. Oh, it's beautiful. Now, where can people see real detailed pictures of that? Do they have to go to your website or your Facebook page? Where would you like them to be? Um. No, it's okay. <laughs> uh, the best place to go, there's two There's two sites, uh, Threadless, that's like threadless.com, and type in my name. Uh, you'll be able to see my current portfolio, and you can actually order t-shirts with the artwork on it. Fantastic. Uh, and you have one of the t-shirts on too, right? Um, actually... This is uh, the Hendrix t-shirt, one of the branded images I did. Uh, the artwork is from a piece called Fire that Hendrix did, and I pieced mm. it together, segmented together into his hair. Wow, that's cool. I love it. Signature right down the corner. Do you think it's important, I mean, in your experience from what you've gone into and, and having the clothing side, do you think it's important for every artist to develop T-shirts or clothing items or additional merchandise like that? I do. Uh, one of the things that I talked to with the owner of the collection was uh, they thought, and they did a bunch of market testing, that T-shirts would be the money maker that would be yeah. the bread and butter everything mm -hmm. else you know we did actually there is a silk uh, woman's clothing line which is not out yet um it's red carpet stuff oh, uh, interesting. but you know that's who can afford a five thousand dollar dress you know uh, everybody can afford a t-shirt sure yeah i can see where it would be especially you know when when you're talking about social media today and indie artists, artists are so influential when they're really good at marketing their music because you get this wonderful piece of that's emotionally driven into the hands of people who really love the kind of things that you create. So then you have this, this need for more, you know, like there, it, there's a need for more things, more creativity from the artist. So I always find that when an artist is doing well and they start to, to build a community, it's awesome to offer pieces that you, you really care about, things that are just a little bit different, like a special limited edition anything, you know, whether it be a vinyl record with a custom cover or, you know, autograph photos are the least, right? T-shirts are excellent. You know, there's just so many things you can get into. And now here you've done artwork and prints. Now, you said, you mentioned that the original pieces of artwork, do you actually sell those? No, I, I don't I don't have rights to the Hendrix artwork. I mean, mm -hmm. I was just their branding artist. But um, like your your pieces that you, you have over here on the wall, do you sell the originals or do you sell prints only? Uh, right now, only prints. Um, I've been gearing up to sell originals uh, on Van Gogh, uh, and that's going to happen within the next three months. Oh, that's so cool. I can't wait to see that. The um, What about like cell phone color covers and technology? I would think that there's a big market for that because it's so hard to find a really cool looking cover for your computer, your cell phone. They're all like these, you know, you go anywhere and they're either really kind of techy and rubberized or something, or if they have a pattern on it, everybody has the same thing. Any it's, it's a fine line uh, on that. You don't want to get just seeming like you're just selling junk, you know? I yeah. don't, you think it's too much, too many products? Yeah, uh, out there. And I used to do that, but I really scaled back. Um, yeah. But I will be exploring, I'm looking at what is better selling than another item. Keep those cues down, right? 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, I know how that is. And once you get up and I think at one time uh, we have a clothing product line and we had like 550 SKUs and I was like, this is just, a, it's just so much, <laughs> so much to keep track of. So it's really good to, to definitely limit your SKUs, especially when you're pumping out music and that's, you know, kind of the priority. To, I, tell me what else is going on then. What is the plan for you for the rest of this year? Moving into 2018, what are you most looking forward to? Um, I'm working on another music project. Um, and my publisher, Jan Cooper, we just got back from Meet in France uh, with several contracts, uh, three actually. One that looks really more interesting to me, uh, and it's going to involve some overseas work. Uh, so they're trying to gear my new project towards a different format. I really? Wanna, I wanna, it'll be some of the same, um, but maybe a little bit more of what I was doing when I was doing the Stiff Pities. Ah, oh, really? So what made you? What made them bring this up? Is that is it a trend that you're matching? Do you do? Did you discover that you have a niche audience there, or what made you decide to do it? Um. You know, actually, Jacqueline, about four years ago, a little bit more than that, I had 26 songs charting worldwide um, in mm -hmm. every genre you could imagine. Um, classical, new age, healing, uh, symphonic, pop rock. Uh, and at that time, I had a band called The Stiff Kitties. Uh, I was, you know, really huge overseas. And yeah. in fact, that's where Harrison Funk, uh, Michael Jackson's personal photographer, ran into me and my stuff, along with Michael Jackson. Um, so I was really in a, the electronic kind of genre, I'll say that, yeah. uh, to begin with. So when Warner Chapel, you know, I signed last year in July, uh, it's, it was a totally different type of a contract when he came back last year, Jan, he brought seven contracts with him from the meetup for me. The people were super excited. Um, my catalog is huge. Uh, and so he got a call from Warner Chapel. They wanted to meet with him while he was there. Uh, he, and at first, I guess the, the meeting didn't occur because the person got into an accident. And he kind of blew it off like, Maybe they don't want to talk to us. It's okay. No worries. But he ended up meeting up with them, and we did get the contract. Um, and, of course, his wife is an entertainment attorney. So is his daughter. Uh, and so I get the free review of his wife and his daughters um, on the legal end. And then it comes to me. And we marked that thing up like crazy, Jacqueline. Uh, it was bleeding by the time it went back to water. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, but you know what? They accepted every edit um, and I got a really sweet deal. Um, I've had people tell me they've heard my stuff in an elevator in China. It was just totally blown away. So I have international distribution in just about every country you can imagine. Right now. Oh my gosh. Congratulations on that. And I know you worked really hard for it and you continue to work hard at what you do. I know that because I've been, I've been around you for quite some time now, you know, and although we're just, we're just getting to know each other. I think that I I'm very, very impressed with everything that you, you do and your team does. And I love the support that you managed to rally. You know, you've got a, a real sense of community and you, you understand what your listeners really like and they kind of they they have a kinship for you because they really do show up you know i mean i remember when we were working on um the promotion together before you won one of the shore mics which i you're, you're using it now for your audio right yes that's awesome <laughs> they, i i remember seeing so i mean you rightfully won that microphone you you and your team and your community they were just diane all over the place every time we looked at the hashtags i was like it's just diane and i would run the scans on it and it would be like diane all over down the thing and i'm like she's just a clear winner because <laughs> it was just amazing support and a lot of reach 
that you're managed to get. And I think that that, uh, you know, that shows a tremendous, tremendously well done job because in today's really busy internet, all of the artists that are listening to the show, anyone who's ever run a business on social media can, can attest to the fact that it is not easy to get a big reach, nor is it easy to get your people and your community to share things out. And you managed to do that. I saw it firsthand. So that's awesome. Well, thank you, Jax. You know, I could share a story with you. Uh, what means, and I answered a question just this past week, a friend of mine asked me what basically I considered to be a success in a music business. Um, and there's actually two stories to this. One is if somebody looks at you and says, Diane, that song, your music, it saved my life. Yeah. Uh, and and then also I have another young lady here in Albuquerque. We did not know each other. We did not know that we had both moved from Florida. Uh, and she left around the same time I did with her pains. She got into a terrible accident last year. Uh -huh. In the middle of it, she bought my C D. Wow. And um even she lost her home, she lost her job. And, and finally, uh, and, and she's been a fan of mine for six years. Finally, I said, you know what, we need to go out for coffee. And we so we actually met for lunch. Um, and it was so cool. Well, I actually got to meet her in person. And that's what it's all about. It's where the rubber yeah. meets. I love that is one of my I wish I could meet them all. <laughs> I I agree with you. And yeah, probably, you know, eventually you'll you'll get a chance like through meet and greets or online is changing so much. I have to say I'm even seeing um, different broadcasting software where you can have like a hundred people show up in your live broadcast just like we're doing right now. And can you imagine that? I mean, that would be quite amazing. So people can actually follow and be part of the live stream, but they can show up in the, to the broadcast and talk to you face to face. That's, I think, going to be a huge game changer, you know? So there's a lot coming that we haven't even seen yet. Definitely implement that. Deck. So I have a show coming up in LA um, this fall. Mm -hmm. and we're going to be doing a behind the stage, a one on one. Uh, with super fans, uh, the people that have been following me, so they'll be able to get behind it. We're going to have uh, somebody running the video. <laughs> it probably won't be me. Uh, <laughs> you know, it probably also won't even be Rodolfo because actually he plays uh, um, too. Uh, but it'll be somebody behind the stage. We're going to do basically a one-on-one -on -one and, and broadcast it. Yeah. And also on stage, we'll do a live the live as well. That's awesome. What is the what is the best piece of music advice that has ever changed your life or your way of thinking? Can you think of anything that stands out? Uh, uh, gosh, you know what? My artist, uh, uh, artists that I love are so all over the map. Yeah. Um, what about what about somebody that you met along the way that gave you, you know, some advice about either working hard or staying inspired or, you know, staying connected to yourself and not letting, you know, the busyness change you. You know, a lot of a lot of times when music artists are trying to pursue this, you can get really, really lost in the pursuit of building your business. And, you know, you take a lot of knocks and you think that you're the only one that's ever going to take them. Right. But in actuality, people are taking them every single day. And the more you put yourself out there and the busier you get, the more negative feedback, you know, the odds are that you're going to hit a lot of really crazy people that are, that are going to affect you, you know? So yeah. is there any kind of advice or anything that you can tell people that, you know, that you've been through, that you've learned from, that might encourage them and make them not feel so like, I don't know, knocked down as a creative soul, you know, somebody trying to, to make it happen for themselves, but not feeling like it's ever going to. Well, you know, I'm going to go back the ways. Um, I would say my mom, 
because she's no longer here. I lost mm -hmm. her. She was really quite young. Um, but she worked her fingers to bone to get me to be able to take lessons. I started pestering my parents when I was four years old. Oh, my gosh. And I'm too young to take lessons is what they said, you know. <laughs> they had any flute. Uh, <laughs> but my mom went back to work against my father's wishes and her main goal was to get me to get the piano lessons. Uh, and I got lessons and started at the age of nine with Mrs. Keller. Uh, Mrs. Keller, of course, is no longer with us either, but uh, what she saw in me was the creative, you know, I'd sit, I'd sit down and when I was a toddler and, I, and my dad was a treasurer in the church and I'd be in the fellowship hall just playing away like I was Beethoven. And I'd never had a lesson in my life. And I sat down in front of her and she was like, uh, talking to my mom, she needs to be in the piano guild. And <laughs> I'm an hour with her. So the first half hour was fun. You know, I got to sit down and show her what I wrote. And then she showed me how to notate it. Uh, the last half hour, um, she would sit up straight. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. It's always about the posture. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so between my mom and Mrs. Keller, um, they got me started off right. Um, but I, I, I took lessons in so, on so many instruments, I get bored very easily. Uh, yeah. Violin, flute, clarinet, trumpet. <laughs> Interesting. You know, a lot of a lot of creative creative people do. There's a there's an old an old thing that used to happen years ago and it doesn't happen so much anymore. Although if you do end, end up working with somebody in the industry, that's kind of like a, you know, a mainstay and kind of old fashioned, they, they tend to say the same thing. They always say, you need to just pick one thing and focus on that. And just similar to the way people advised you to choose one piece of artwork and one style and be that artist it's really difficult as creative people to rein it all in and not want to try different things. What do you think is the balance there? Because we have to, as creative souls, go where our passion is and where our hearts are, right? We know that. And a lot of people get confused, I think, because they want to know what line they're supposed to walk where they, they don't cross into something they shouldn't be doing so that they're losing focus. So how do you do it? right? Yourself, create different things and still be Diane. It's, it's a struggle. You know, it's interesting. This is the second time this question has been asked. I had an interview the other evening, Friday night, and it's like, uh... <laughs> I get asked it all the time. I get asked all the time. Whenever I'm, I'm talking to someone that's been in the industry for a year, like, you know, since well, well, a long time ago, we'll just say that. <laughs> they always say the same thing. Well, you know, the, the problem is with young people today is they try to be, you know, too into too many different things. And I always say, well, if you look at people like Beyonce or, you know, any, any of the mainstream artists, you know, they have music careers, they have video, they do appearances, they do movies, you know, they're into acting, they do clothing lines, they endorse perfumes, or they come out with their own fragrance. There's so many different facets to their creativity and their levels of products and things that they get into. They write wrote poetry, release books. Uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, who is, a, you know, a well-known actress, right? She ended up releasing a cooking book and has been doing really, really well with her cooking blog and stuff. So you see how your interests become part of who you are. And on social media, I feel like the more creativity that you can express and show, the more interesting you are. So I think that's like our new generation of line, don't you? It's hard, it's hard Jack. I mean, uh, I did go to college um, yeah. and it was an insistence of my father. He would not pay for my college or help out at all if I went for any type of arts, I will not have a starving artist. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, right? So you had to do it. <laughs> I went to business school. It was good for me. It was really good for me. It helped me organize um, my thoughts. Interesting. Oh, so, so true. So yeah, true. He didn't know I double majored. <laughs> and 
and I still took music performance. <laughs> ah. <laughs> See, now here, this is interesting. Most people that don't make it in the music business have no idea about how to run a business. And I think that there's a direct relationship to being an artist and actually appreciating and knowing how to run a business. How much time do you feel you dedicate? And you might just do it naturally, but how much time do you feel you dedicate to your work and your product versus the business side of making this happen for you? Um, developing the product or developing the idea might have a lot of time in it. Sure. But just as much, not necessarily actually executing like painting the painting. Um, right. Developing the product and also the business plan to make it happen, I would say are equal. You know, and then for me, I mean, sitting down with the paintbrush or the guitar is just doing it. It's, it happens very fast. Yeah. Um, but it, you got to have a plan. Um, and, and I have to revisit that plan often, not just because I'm a Gemini and I'm all over the map, <laughs> but I have to revisit the plan because times are changing. It's just like you're keeping up on the social networks. I they mean, are. so are people's taste. Mm -hmm. what they want. are. They want. So true. And they change very, very quickly. I mean, um, well, I mean, I think way faster today than it ever has. And I think that in 2000 and, you know, just this year, since the start of the year, we really felt, everybody really felt it. There, there were so many artists that have focused only on like one social media page, never, never thought of an email list, never built a website. They just put everything in to one platform. Even YouTubers who put everything into one platform and then they literally got it ripped out. They watched the numbers to start to sail and they no longer could do the same routine that they got used to to get the same results, but more. Now what's happening is there's some of them are going to therapy because they're just, they're going nuts. They're going so crazy because their lifestyle and what they had gotten used to is being pulled out from under them because they didn't prepare, you know, in more than one way. They were reliant on a social page or reliant on something that wasn't truly ever theirs. It was just given to them and they were allowed to use it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I just, you know, here's what I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, you'll see my hashtag out there. That's why they call it the music business. One of the things that artists, and we talked about this, I, I co hosted the show uh, with Mike Leonard the other night. It was a great show. We talked about radio, the promotion. Um, yeah. And I made a comment, and all the other guys laughed. I said, you know what? All these artists go to the studio and they create this album. It's really becomes a drink coaster because they haven't made the plan because they yeah. always forget music business. That's why they call it the music business. We still have to make money. I know. Yeah. I, I'm surprised that more musicians don't even look at their back work as viable product anymore. I, I'm amazed that the majority of artists look at their back work like it's just forgotten. Oh yeah, I released that last month. I'm already on to like six more songs, but I don't, you know what I mean? There are they're odds of people ever hearing all of that product is, is just, you know, so slim. If you don't mind, if you have a desire to be internationally distributed, mm -hmm. then you better get your house in order because um, one of the things I would recommend is if you have a catalog, is that you put it in a spreadsheet. Overseas, they require on your contracts everything, not just your ISRC codes, but your IPA numbers for each and every track, your own IPA number because you have one assigned to you by your pro as your that's your international number, uh, so they can help track your song. So if you have a catalog, the old stuff is important. Because the bigger the catalog you have, the more desirable you are. That's yeah. how I got to deal with Warner Chapel. Mm, that's great advice. I'm so glad you mentioned that because we don't talk about that enough. You know, those 
those, all these pieces are things that people just have no idea. Even if they've been doing this for a long time, they still have no idea about, you know, content ID and tracking what they have. It, it's just almost as if all the hard work that they've, they've uh, put out there just doesn't really matter. You know, it's only the, the current piece of work that actually they care about at that time. And then they're on to the next. And I think that uh, with so much piracy, with so much going on, there's so much opportunity that's being missed. And I, I don't like to see that for artists because at the end, it hurts them and maybe discourages them more than anything else because they don't know how to use everything that they have already created. Absolutely. You know, and I, I think I might have texted this to you. One of the things that I think is important, and I learned this lesson from MySpace. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. I had a lot of friends and friends when MySpace did their flop. Uh, <laughs> and they basically are still up, but I lost all of my contacts. Um, oh, I know. Is get an email. Get, you know, make sure you capture people's information. You know, have another way to be able to contact them. Mm -hmm. I have an email list that's separate from Instagram and Reverb Nation and uh, Facebook that you can sign up for. Uh, if you go to my Facebook, you can just click the sign up and it'll collect your information. You'll, you'll get on that email list. So important. I think it's so important. I, you know, I feel like I'm talking about that all the time. And I guess because I'm always speaking to at any given moment, maybe two, 250 different artists in our network. And it always goes back to the same thing. Well, do you have an email list? And surprisingly, as much as I talk about, oh, <laughs> and I'm like, why? <laughs> that would be, you know, even if it's just a reverb nation page that collects the email, you know, that's the simplest, right? Cause it's already there. They don't even have to, um, you don't even have to get a client. I personally love things like, you know, MailChimp, I think is, is really been consistent and easy to use, but everybody has something they like, but I think yeah. that that is just so necessary. Reverb Nation has a pretty good platform so far. I mean, I've asked them to tweak some things here and there and they have been amenable. Um, yeah. But the best page to go to find me and the most active one I have is uh, the, at Diane's Music on uh, Facebook. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much. That's so cool. Now tell me one more thing. I want to know, what do you feel is going to be the most exciting part of this next year for you? Are you going to be, I know that, I know that you're coming out with a new direction. I know that you're doing new music. I know that, it, is there something really, really exciting that you can tell us to anticipate and a reason being that we should sign up for your email list. Um, what I'm really excited about with what's on the horizon of what Jan came back with from Needham uh, and, and that's you know, traveling both overseas and here with uh, potentially a collaborator from another label um, from another country. Yeah. Excited about that. One of the things I've been learning from Jan is, and I've been learning how to sing in different languages. And that's another thing I could pass on to the artist. You could take one song and you could make it go miles. Sing it in Italian, sing it in Spanish, sing it in Mandarin. Um, that's one thing that it was like Jan opened my eyes to. Uh, but I'm really excited about what's up and coming course, touring and traveling. How exciting. I'm excited for you. And I cannot wait to see what's next. I'm so glad that you are with AVA Live Radio and you're part of our, our network because I just love hanging out with you. <laughs> so much fun keeping up with what's going on. And I love your artwork. I think that oh, it's just so beautiful. You know what? When you get a chance, I did a painting of my Maltese. I posted it up on my page. I know you have one. Yeah. It was Chloe. Um, oh, okay. I'm going to go look for sure. It's on your Facebook page? Yeah. <laughs> ah, thank you. Thanks for telling me about that. Diane, you have a wonderful night. And thank you so much for being here with us and, and sharing this time with us. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. I had a great time. 
Guys, this is Jacqueline Jacks for AVA Live Radio. Thank you so much for being here. Please share this with your friends and make sure you go and visit Diane Mankey on AVA Live Radio's website as well as her Facebook page. We're going to link everything up for you so you cannot miss her. And you know what? I'm going to go find some of her artwork and share it here on the Facebook page so that you don't miss it. Have a great one. And don't forget, tomorrow is New Music Monday. See you later.